Hello everyone, happy evening, a very good evening. I hope and I believe all of you are doing well. Uh, am I audible and visible guys? A quick nod whether I'm audible and visible. All right, that's great. So yes, happy evening, everyone. Uh, and here we are in uh, medicine PYQs with mnemonics, uh, basically telling you how useful the mnemonics are sometimes to remember the difficult and the volatile topics. So why medicine are we doing today? Because according to the timetable that we are following on the Telegram group, today is the last day of medicine. And uh, so that's why we are doing some PYQs here. And for those of you who have missed the last uh, YouTube live session that we had had, which was basically FMGE binge revision, the LMR session that we had, uh, please watch that session. It's going to help you for the quick revision of the important uh, one-liners, topics, flashcards in medicine, right? It's not only for FMG, it is for NEET PG as well. Mm, yes, MD, uh, we will be having that uh, somewhere towards the end of uh, November, okay? Hmm. Right. Shiva Joseph, not doing any recall of FMG like radiology recall I've done on the Prep Ladder YouTube channel. Uh, for the rest of the subjects, I'm not doing because, uh, yeah, uh, I don't have a first hand experience uh, with FMG unlike the NEET PG and INICT, where I'd given the exam myself and then I knew the questions, and that is why I was pretty uh, confident about those. Okay. So let's start. Uh, with the PYQs, I've shared the PDF on Telegram group already. So if you want to annotate as we discuss, you can get the PDF from there as well. Okay, so let's start with the first question. Comparatively easy questions, but uh, helping you to remember them with the mnemonics, like I said. So much of the following is not seen in men to be syndrome, right? These are some of the recent NEET PG exam questions, okay? Which of the following is not seen in men to be syndrome? So remember for the men syndromes, basically for the men syndromes, that is multiple endocrine neoplasia, we have men 1, we have men 2A, we have men 2B, men 2A is also called men 2, men 2B is also called men 3, and then we have now men 4 also, okay? Right. So now uh, in men 1, what do you have in men 1? Remember men is 3 lettered 1, 2, 3. So basically you start with 3, that is 3 P's and 0 M's. Then you start decreasing the P's. It is 2 P and 1 M. Then it is 1 P and 2 M. So the total basically should be 3. So remember that it should be 3. So start with 3 P. 3P, 2P, 1P, right? 3 plus 0 is 3. So 0M, 1M and 2M. Not discussing about men 4 uh, right now. So what are the 3Ps? This is another confusing area here. How should you remember that is? Remember what P does not come in men 1 is pheochromocytoma. What comes is parathyroid. So if I show you this, so in the men 1, you have parathyroid, you have pituitary and you have pancreas. What P we do not have in men 1? Remember, it is pheochromocytoma. Okay, it is pheochromocytoma. So how do you remember this is P ke baad aata hai A, which is the first alphabet. So this is men 1. P ke baad it is I, which is 1. P ke baad it is A, which is the first alphabet. So remember P, A, P, I and P, A. These are included in men 1. Okay, pheochromocytoma is PH. It is not PA or PI. So basically, remember in men 1, the three Ps that we have is PA, PA and PI. That is parathyroid, pancreas and pituitary. We do not have pheochromocytoma. Pheochromocytoma is present in both men 2A and men 2B. So what is not in men 1 is present in both the men 2s. 
and what is common in uh, men 1 and men 2a is parathyroid okay so parathyroid and pheochromocytoma are present in two men syndromes so again you can remember this para is sabka pyara that means do cheezon mein aayega men 1 mein bhi aayega men 2 mein bhi aayega pheo is pheo is favorite okay pheo is again favorite for two that is men 2a and men 2b so para is pyara for men 1 and men 2 pheo is favorite for men 2a and men 2b okay so what is not there in men 2b the pancreas the parathyroid is not there it's only pheochromocytoma right the 1m and the 1m which is common in both of these is the medullary thyroid cancer the mtc medullary thyroid cancer is present in both men 2a and men 2b as well remember that medullary thyroid cancer med is present in men so you also get a question that which thyroid cancer is present in men syndrome is it follicular papillary medullary anaplastic so remember med is men med is present in men syndrome and even in med the d helps you to remember it is di that means it is present in men 2 men 2a and men 2b okay men 2a and men 2b so if you look at this very carefully behind the concept of this that why do you have pheochromocytoma and medullary thyroid cancer present in both men 2a and men 2b guys it is because of that pheochromocytoma adrenal medulla ka tumor medullary thyroid cancer para follicular c cells of thyroid ka tumor both of these are derived from neural crest cells embryologically and the neural crest cell is regulated by the red gene which is the gene for men 2 right that is why you have these common tumors in both so uh, neural crest cell wala para follicular c cells this is your recent fmg exam question as well para follicular c cells derived from the neural crest cell medullary thyroid cancer pheochromocytoma this is men 2 the gene is the red gene the red gene is present on ter that is ten chromosome it is present on chromosome number 10 so red is present on 10 okay red is present on 10 is this clear with everyone right clear with everyone so remember uh, this is men 1 and men 2 and in men 2b you have multiple m's now marfanoid habitus mucosal neuromas medulated corneal nerves medulated corneal nerves uh, mega colon all of these are present in men 2b the multiple m's 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 so men 1 is p dominant men 2b is m dominant okay now, what is MEN4? What is affected in MEN4? What gene is that? CDKN1B, cyclin-dependent kinase wala, that is CDKN1B, which is very similar to MEN1. It is parathyroid tumors. It has pancreas tumors as well. Okay, clear with everyone? So, which of the following is not seen in MEN2B, which is MEN3? Basically, it has MM wala. Mega colon is there, mucosal neuroma is there, marfanoid habitus is there, parathyroid is PA, this is men 1, right? This is present in men 1 and men 2A. It is not present in men 2B. Para is Piara for men 1 and men 2A. Very good. Harrison Medicals, it is CDK1, uh, CDKN1B gene, which is on chromosome number 12. And can someone tell me what is the inheritance pattern of men syndromes? What is the inheritance pattern of the men syndromes? Are they autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, X-linked recessive? What is the inheritance pattern? Absolutely. Remember that men are dominant. Okay. Men are dominant. So it is autosomal dominant. Okay. It is autosomal dominant. Men are dominant. Very good. Yeah. That was the first question here. Uh, that was the first question here, Vishnu. Going on to the next question. Which of the following is the first line drug of choice? Which of the following is the first line drug of choice in myasthenia gravis? Yes, what is the first line drug of choice in myasthenia gravis? Is it prednisolone? Is it azathioprine? Is it uh, 
पायरिडोस्टेगमेंट और आईवीआईजी Absolutely right. It's pyridose segment. We had discussed in the binge revision session also the last FMG session that pyridose segment helps you get rid of myasthenia gravis. Okay, pyridose segment helps you get rid of myasthenia gravis. In contrast to the drug which is used for diagnosis of myasthenia gravis, what drug is used for diagnosis of myasthenia gravis? Which acetylcholine esterase inhibitor? It is edrophonium. Okay, it is edrophonium which is used for a diagnosis. So remember that edrophonium, that is DR, doctor makes the diagnosis. Okay, doctor is for diagnosis. This is also called as the tensilon test. Okay, it is also called as the tensilon test. So basically, both of pyridostigmine and edrophonium, these are acetylcholine esterase inhibitors. So they increase acetylcholine levels and that is why it improves the symptoms of myasthenia gravis. Basically, in myasthenia gravis, we have antibodies against the acetylcholine receptor, which is the postsynaptic, not the presynaptic receptor. And because this is antibody against the receptor, that is why now it is classified into type 5 hypersensitivity. Previously, it was type 2 hypersensitivity, right? So, type 5 or type 2. So, remember that myasthenia gravis for diagnosis, the drug used for a diagnosis is edrophonium. Doctor makes a diagnosis. Pyridostigmin is for treatment to help you get rid of myasthenia gravis. And the classical clinical history in myasthenia gravis will be ptosis, will be fatigue, which is more in evening okay ptosis or fatigue which worsens in the evening or with activity that is the classical history there the tumor associated is thymoma associated with thymoma is pure red cell aplasia okay associated with thymoma is pure red cell aplasia right clear with everyone Great. Going on to the next question. What do you think will be answer to this one? A patient comes to sleep clinic and following pattern is seen on polysomnography. What type of breathing pattern is this? Is this biots? Is this cosmos? Is this chain strokes? Or this is hyperventilation? Very good. Correct. Geetika, Vishnu, Shweta, everyone correct. Absolutely right. This is chain stokes respiration. Okay. This one here that you are seeing is chain stokes respiration. Why is this not biots? Let me tell you the quick mnemonics here. Remember, biots is bi is biphasic. That means there is hyperapnea and then apnea. Hyperapnea and then apnea. So it is biphasic. Chain stokes, CS is crescendo, chain stokes is crescendo, decrescendo type. So you see this waxing, waning, and then there is a period of apnea. Okay, then there's a period of apnea. So remember that chain stokes is CS, crescendo, decrescendo. Wala. Let's have a look at this one. So look at this chain stokes breathing. It is crescendo and decrescendo. Then there's apnea. Look at biots. It is same height, okay? It is the same depth of breathing. So, it is hyperapnea and apnea. Hyperapnea, apnea is what we see. Remember that biots is biphasic. Chain stokes is crescendo, decrescendo. Cusmol's breathing seen in diabetic ketoacidosis, basically to compensate for metabolic acidosis. You can see that this acapnea and hyperapnea is what we see here, okay? Clear with everyone? So, this is uh, basically the difference between chain strokes and biots. Remember that this is chain strokes, has been asked in the recent exam. Going to the next question here which serological marker can be used to diagnose acute hepatitis B in the window period? Very, very important hepatitis B serology. 
Which serological marker can be used to diagnose acute hepatitis B in the window period? Very good. Correct. Sesha, Unava, Pranshu, very correct. It is NTHBC. Okay, NTHBC. So, quickly talking about hepatitis B serology. Okay, in hepatitis B serology, the one which is always present in a patient who is infected. What is always present in a patient who is infected with hepatitis B? Remember, it is NTHBC. Antibody against the HBC, not the antigen. So remember that C for C. That means anti-HBC is constantly present in a patient who is infected with hepatitis B. Anti-HBC is constantly present. You don't have HBC antigen. Okay, it is the anti-HBC. So that is why be it whatever, be it an acute infection, be it a chronic infection, be it a window period, this is always, always, always present. Okay, C for constant. What is the sequence of the markers in hepatitis B? Remember the palindrome secus. Okay, you read it like this or you read it like this. It's the same. So remember, it's a palindrome secus. First comes the antigen, right? Then comes the antibody. So, HBS antigen, HBE antigen. HBC antigen nahi aata hai. Core antigen nahi aata hai. Core antibody aata hai. So, the rest are the antibody. So, if I ask you what is the first marker, it is HBS antigen. What is the last marker? It is NTHBS. What is the marker that is suggestive of a recovery in a patient of hepatitis B? Which marker when present is suggestive of recovery? The one which comes at the last. So what comes at the last? HBS antibody. So basically this is NTHBS. Okay, it is NTHBS which comes at the last. That is suggestive of recovery. Okay, uh, and the next one, which is suggestive of replication or the infectivity. Remember, replication is E, that is hepatitis B, E antigen. It is E antigen. Okay, it is E antigen. Have a look at this graph here. Have a look at this graph. One, then you have this two and three. Basically, what are these markers here? If you are asked in the graph, so look at this graph here, the one which is constantly present, right? It is rising and then it is reaching a plateau. It is not coming down. That means this is the one which is constant to positive. That is NTHBC. Okay, that is NTHBC. So coming together, basically this is NTHBC. This is the IgM one which increases and then it decreases. Okay, so this is IgM and this is the total NTHBC. The first to come is SECS HBS antigen. The last to come is NTHBS. This is suggestive of recovery. Okay, this is suggestive of recovery. So remember that in the window period, it is NTHBC. Okay, it is NTHBC that is positive. And uh, what is positive in a patient who has received a vaccine, immunized patient, not an infected patient, is NTHBS only. The NTHBC is negative, right? So if NTHBC is negative, but the NTHBS is positive, it suggests the immunized status. It is not an infection. Because infection is NTHBC positive. Hota. Here the NTHBC is negative. It is only NTHBS which is positive. Okay, it is only NTHBS which is positive. Right, so Dhwani, I hope this is clear. Vaccinated patient or recovery wale mein kya farak hoga? Ki recovery wale mein kyunki infection hai, the NTHBC will still be positive, IgG. Here, the NTHBC will be negative. It's only NTHBS that will be positive. Okay, Geetika? It's not the antigen which is positive. In the vaccine, we give the HBS ka surface antigen wala subunit basically. And to that comes the antibodies. Okay? Is this clear with everyone regarding hepatitis B serology? Okay, now let's go to the next question. The given murmur is seen in which of the following conditions? Mitral stenosis, AR, AS or MS?
what do you think will be the answer to this one where do you see the given murmur mm, why 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 sesha this is aortic regurgitation guys why many of you are saying aortic regurgitation so means that we need to clarify this topic here acha to mera basically option se same ho gaya koi to bol do ki this is mitral stenosis do bar repeat ho chuka hai this is mitral regurgitation theek hai the one option here is mitral regurgitation this is mitral stenosis theek hai my bad okay so first of all answer me that whether this is a systolic murmur or this is a diastolic murmur what murmur is this ye systolic murmur hai ki ye diastolic murmur hai so how do you identify a very very easy trick to identify whether this is systolic or this is diastolic very good so remember that the murmur that is shown here is between s1 and s2 S1 and S2 के बीच में बेसिकली दिस इज सिस्टोल S2 के S1 के बीच में दिस इज डायस्टोल हाउ डू वी रिमेंबर दैट इज रिमेंबर दैट डायस्टोल डाय फॉर डाय टू डाय इज स्टार्टिंग विथ टू सो डायस्टोल स्टार्ट विथ एस टू इफ द मर्मर इज बिटवीन एस टू एंड एस वन एस टू स्टार्ट द डायस्टोल सो दैट्स अ डायस्टोलिक मर्मर S1 और S2 के बीच में है सो दिस बिकम्स अ सिस्टोलिक मर्मर सो बेसिकली दिस इज अ सिस्टोलिक मर्मर right this is a systolic murmur now where do you see systolic murmur in which aortic uh, lesion and in which mitral lesion do you see systolic murmur you can understand this with mnemonic so you can understand this with concept the mnemonic is aortic valve is a semi lunar valve right so the systolic uh, murmur is seen in semi lunar ka stenosis remember s s s okay basically this is s s s systolic murmur is semi lunar ka stenosis so aortic stenosis is systolic so mitral ka ulta hoga mitral regurgitation will be systolic right so in the options uh, in my options i'll either ke because this is a systolic murmur either it is aortic stenosis or it is mitral regurgitation the rest of these i will rule out it's not mitral stenosis or aortic regurgitation aortic regurgitation ulta hoga that will be diastolic mitral stenosis ulta hoga that will be uh, diastolic okay that is the mnemonic that you can remember a concept samajhna hai to concept zyada easy hai basically wherever there is a stenotic lesion stenosis matlab narrowing agar aapne koi rasta pipe chhota kar diya stenotic if you make it narrow so when the water the blood will flow through it it will create sound turbulence and murmur so basically through the stenotic lesions the murmur occurs when the flow is happening through the stenotic lesions so if you talk about aortic stenosis and mitral stenosis when does the blood flow through the aortic valve during the systole when the ventricle is contracting the blood flows through the aortic valve and that is why aortic stenosis is a systolic murmur mitral valve the blood flows through the mitral valve from the atrium into the ventricle that is ventricle filling that happens in diastole that is why mitral stenosis is a diastolic murmur okay that's a diastolic murmur so remember that stenosis wale are basically the flow murmurs so aortic is systole mitral is diastole so systolic and diastolic okay systolic and diastolic right now the murmur that you see here how do i differentiate now whether this is aortic stenosis or this is mitral regurgitation so through the aortic stenosis when the blood is flowing the murmur increases right crescendo type and then it decreases so you have the crescendo decrescendo murmur in aortic stenosis here the kind of murmur intensity that you see it is same throughout that means this is a pan systolic murmur which is suggestive of mitral regurgitation so what happens in mitral regurgitation is when the ventricle is contracting that is the stole the high pressure in the ventricle sends the regurgitant jet into the atrium so that is why it gives a pan systolic murmur okay it gives a pan systolic murmur so this is mitral regurgitation because this is a pan systolic murmur can you tell me any other condition where we have pan systolic murmur apart from mitral regurgitation 
any other condition where you have pan-systolic murmur apart from mitral regurgitation? Yes? Very good, Sesha. That is VST, ventricle sep ventricular septal defect. So the concept basically very good. It is TR, MR, right side may TR, left side may MR and VST. So uh, left ventricle, imagine that this is the left ventricle. If there is any abnormal opening, that is mitral regurgitation or it is VSD. Any abnormal gate which is kept open during the systole will have pan-systolic murmur. So, be it mitral regurgitation or be it ventricular septal defect. TR also is pan-systolic murmur. Okay. The difference between TR and MR, that is right-sided murmur, left-sided murmur will be the right-sided murmur increase in inspiration. The left-sided murmur, they decrease in inspiration. Okay, that's the difference in between the two. Uh, Varun, remember that in PDA, it's a continuous murmur. Systole also and diastole also. It's a continuous murmur. Okay. So, look at this uh, image here telling you the various uh, murmurs here. So, between S2 and S1, that is going to be diastole. It starts with S2 and then it is S1. Okay. Aortic stenosis is crescendo, decrescendo, systolic murmur. Mitral regurgitation is pan-systolic murmur. Aortic regurgitation is a decrescendo, early diastolic murmur. Mitral stenosis is a mid-diastolic murmur with pre-systolic accentuation. And PDA basically is continuous. Okay, it is present in both systole and diastole. It's a machinery murmur infraclavicular region. Okay, so... Look at this murmur now, guys. This is another kind of image that can come in the exam. Look at this one. And now tell me what valvular lesion is this? Is this AS, AR, MS, MR? What valvular lesion is this? Is this AS, AR or this is MS, MR? Very good, Lakshmi. Absolutely right. So, this is a diastolic murmur. Starting with S2, so this is a diastolic murmur. Either it is AR or it is MS. Mitral stenosis wala murmur is a mid-diastolic murmur with pre-systolic accentuation. Aortic regurgitation is a decrescendo murmur, early diastolic murmur. Right, with aortic regurgitation, the blood flow is maximum in the early diastole. Right. It is maximum in the early diastole, then it keeps on decreasing. It's an early diastolic decrescendo type of murmur. Okay, this is aortic regurgitation. Okay, so this is a quick review about the murmurs going on to the next question. What do you think will be answer to this one? A patient is on multiple antihypertensive drugs and in ECG, the following finding is seen. Which drug is responsible for this? Very good. Vishnu, Harrison, Medico is absolutely right. It is pyronolactone. Why is this pyronolactone? Because what are you seeing in the ECG here? What are we seeing in the ECG here? Look at this one. So, this is the tall tented T waves that we are seeing here. Okay, the tall tented T waves is what we are seeing here. And look at the P wave. The P wave is almost flat. Okay, so yes, this is a finding of hyperkalemia. Okay, recent neat PG exam question. This is hyperkalemia. Remember in ECG when the potassium increases. Increase potassium. Potassium is responsible for repolarization, right? And repolarization in the ECG is indicated by the T wave. So when the K increases, the T increases. And that is why the first finding that you have in hyperkalemia is tall tented T wave. Remember the changes in the P wave are opposite. 
when the t becomes tall tented the p becomes less so it becomes flat or it becomes absent so the p decreases the t increases that is the finding that you see there okay so spironolactone because it is a potassium sparing diuretic that means it increases potassium that is why it will have the findings of hyperkalemia okay it will have the findings of hyperkalemia hydrochlorothiazide on the other hand causes hypokalemia okay it causes hypokalemia clear with everyone so remember that tall tented t waves and then you have the p waves which are flat in severe hyperkalemia you will see the sine wave pattern okay you will see the sine wave pattern in severe hyperkalemia the drug of choice in hyperkalemia if there are ecg findings like this is calcium gluconate to stabilize the heart to prevent the arrhythmias right then to decrease the potassium you can give insulin with dextrose right all these are the drugs that we use in hyperkalemia all right uh going on to the next question related to ecg again a patient is on diuretics and presents with flat t wave and prominent u waves which of the following is likely in this patient so now you have a patient with flat t wave and the prominent u waves t kam ho gaya right t kam ho gaya matlab repolarization potassium kam ho gaya this is hypokalemia also remember the mnemonic that is u wave u for under it is present in uk u is uk it is present in underkalemia okay so prominent u wave is present in underkalemia uk is what you should remember okay and so hypokalemia so u wave rahega t wave kam ho jayega the p wave will become prominent okay opposite is what happens when the potassium decreases the t wave decreases so the p wave becomes prominent what is the terminology for prominent p wave called as basically it is p pulmonale peaked p wave so this is called as pseudo p pulmonale another potential question where do you see pseudo p pulmonale it is seen in hypokalemia or underkalemia right because the p increasing means the t decreasing then that, that means it is hypokalemia okay that is hypokalemia so remember u is uk okay very very important u is uk so underkalemia hypokalemia is where you see the prominent u wave right all right guys so that was some quick mnemonics from the medicine pyqs to help you remember the pyqs and the related concepts with the help of mnemonics right so that was a quick session there i hope this has come as a refresher session and i'll see you again soon and i'll be sharing the next subject that is the pediatrics targets on the telegram group we are starting with pediatrics tomorrow right so thank you so much everyone and goodbye take care and keep studying keep revising and keep winning thank you thank you so much